I think that the most, like I always tell people, I, th there's two area, there's like, if you look at expertise, right? For salespeople, I'm, I'm going to say specifically for salespeople. There's salespeople who have expertise on a product, meaning they know everything about their product. They know how it works, why it works. They know uh, all the options you could have, whatever their product or service is. They know their product, right? And you got to have that knowledge. But the other knowledge a lot of people miss out on is the customer knowledge, meaning they a really good salespeople knows both. They know their product or service really well, and but they know their customer even better. So they understand their customers' like needs and wants. Um, they they know they know their customer at such a level where they know what they want before the customer even asks for it. And that was I always use this quote from Steve Jobs, and I always get it wrong. And one of these days I'm going to get it right. But Steve Jobs got got like a lot of flack when he said something to the effect of our customers buy what I tell them to buy. In other words, like the, I think the, he was asked, how do you know what kind of new products to make? How do you know, like, do you do case studies? Do you do focus groups? Do you, what do you, do you survey did? What do you use to come up with new products? Like, how do you know what to create? And he basically said something along the line of, I know what to create because I tell my customers what they're going to buy. Now, again, I'm saying this really poorly. And Debbie, someone on here is going to post the link to the quote. But he, that, that wasn't what he was saying. What, what Steve Jobs was saying is he know, knew his customers so well that he knew what to create in some sort of a gut feel intrinsically. He just kind of knew if I made this, my customers would love it. And I get what he's saying now, because like, for example, um, if I go to MSPs and I've had this on multiple occasions and like, I, and this happened just even last Friday, I was talking to a group of client coaches and we asked them things like, okay, guys, we're writing blog articles for the prospect hopper. Is there any topical news or trends or anything we should be writing an article about that, you know, that you guys would want to put on your blog? And it's like looking at a farce full of vowels. They don't even know. They're like, I, I don't know, you know? And so they'll come up with something if I force them, but, but they don't even know what to ask for. And so I have to know my customers and their business and what's going on. I have, I have to know that deep enough where I don't even have to ask them. I just know what to write and I get it right now. Your question's a good one. How do you get to that level of gut knowledge, right? Um, and the reality is, I, I don't know of any, well, I mean, I guess there's shortcuts, right? But it just, I think it's something that it, you have to invest a lot of time in, in listening to your customers and investigating your customers. And when, when you, like people say, oh, you got to listen, you got to listen, and yeah, I heard what you said. I heard the words, but what you what you have to develop the skill of tactical empathy to use a Chris Voss kind of term. You got to understand empathy. So empathy is, I might not even agree with you, but I understand why you think what you do. And I can articulate why you think what you do, maybe even better than you can. And when I can get to that level of empathy with my customers, that's where you really start to have that inner um, sort of north like compass that that helps you know what they're going to buy and what frustrates them and how to go about things, right? And that just takes time. Um, it takes it takes time and it takes a lot of interaction with your customers. So I, I love that you're asking this question. I love that you're wanting to get better. But there's just sometimes you just got to get your reps in. Do you know what I mean, Elena? Do you know what you just got to? Yes, completely. Yeah. And, and so I think it's okay to say, I don't know what that is. I mean, I even have to say that to some of y'all when I'm talking to you and I'll, someone will mention an acronym and I'll be like, all right, I'm going to be the dummy. I don't know what you just said. And, um, and you have to sometimes be brave enough to say, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Right. And you also, I think, you know, selling is not about the tactical knowledge of the bits, the bites, the, the, this, the, that, right. Like on the queue the other day, somebody posted up, you know, what's, what's a tool or something I can use to make my, uh, my, my make my proposal look better. You know, it's like a graphical. And I was like, well, I mean, there's, there's some suggestions. Like I recommended audit, for example, 
But I said, you know, really, they're not buying the proposal, they're buying you. So, uh, you know, don't, the other thing is you're going to have to learn what's important and kind of navigate through all of this stuff to really get down to what's important and what isn't. But I would say really, really focus on your customer and spending time with them. Spend time, like go not just talk to the CEO, go talk to the office manager, talk to some of the sales staff that's where, and, and ask them like, you know, hey, I'm where your IT company, like, tell me what it's like working with us. Tell me what you frustrates you with tech in general. You know, what do you love about putting in a ticket? What do you hate about putting in a ticket? What do you, what do you wish we, you know, those kinds of conversations with not just the CEO, but other people in an organization and, and hearing it over and over again, it'll get into your, your subconscious because I do think, you know, when you talk to really successful entrepreneurs, they tell you, we trust my, I trust my gut. I trust my gut. Well, how do you develop the gut? And I think what the, what your gut is, it's, a, it's, it's years and years of information going in, even in your subconscious where it's, it, it's, you might not even consciously know you're learning it, but it, but it's there and it's making an impact. And over time you hear it, it's, it's pattern recognition that you can't even articulate, right? So I think just spend a lot of time with your customers, um, constantly navigating through what's important and what's not. And then with the marketing, what I would just say is just follow the steps, right? Follow the steps to the letter. So imitate before you innovate. And that's how you're going to learn, right? Because if I need to learn how to bake, I'm not going to just like willy nilly stuff. I'm going to get a recipe. I'm going to follow it to the letter. I'm going to learn how to do the steps in there. And then once I've mastered the fundamentals and I've mastered certain recipes, then I can start putting like a twist on it, right? So just follow the steps as close as you can and know that you can't really learn it until you do it. And you can't be great until you do it poorly and badly and screw it up and do it again and do it again. But the more reps you get in, obviously there's that learning curve you're gonna have to go through. So also just stick with things long enough so that you can get them right.